Hello YouTube, this is Pastor Burgess. How are you guys doing tonight? Well, I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, I'd like to pray for you. And I got a wonderful message tonight. I believe it'll be a blessing. And it is evangelism made personal. And the principles for teaching and evangelism. So this is going to be kind of a little short uh, teaching about uh, how to teach evangelism. And... Um, and so I'll just kind of start with that. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for these viewers. I thank you for each and every one of them. God, I ask that you protect, guide, and direct them, fill them with your Holy Spirit and power, and use them in these last days, God, for your glory, for your name, and for your fame. Oh, Father, I give you praise and glory for all that you're about to do tonight. Father, I just ask that you would anoint my words, God, and anoint these hearers to hear this word, God, that they would be changed by it. Let it go on fertile soil and let their hearts be to receive this word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Evangelism made personal. Principles for teaching and evangelism. Should you decide you are ready to begin teaching others, having an idea of what material and method, multi-lesson, one lesson, etc., you plan to use, there are several principles to keep in mind that can increase the likelihood of, su of success. For example, be class conscious. Rather than getting into religious discussions when it is not convenient, such as at work, always thinking in terms of uh, turning religious inquiries into an opportunity to set up a class or home study and the person uh, study with the person, there are several advantages of doing this. One, those who are not seriously interested in spiritual matters will not consent to a study. Therefore, this will distinguish between the truth seekers and who those who are not. <coughs> Two, it gives you time to carefully prepare your lessons. Three, a discussion of religious matters is more productive when there is, an am when there is ample time and, and the Bible is open to in answers and questions. There will, four, there will be fewer hindrances should the person decide to obey the gospel at that time. Setting up a class is easy. Just ask, if the person says... No, then just leave them with an open invitation to a class anytime in the future. Seek first to understand, then to, uh, to be understood. The principle is key to an effective communication, whether it, it occurs in business, family, relationships, or religious discussions applied to teaching others. It would in involve... One, asking questions, then listening carefully to what the other person is saying. Two, occasionally repeating what they say to make sure you properly understand them. Three, endeavoring to know their own doctrine as well, if not better than they do themselves. Four, trying to put yourself in their place. Imagining that they must feel like to have their cherished beliefs challenged. This will not only improve your ability for effective, to effectively communicate with them, but will also increase the likelihood they will reciprocate by carefully listening to you. Disagree without being disagreeable. This is important, people. People will frequently disagree with you, though some may later change their minds. How can we disagree without being disagreeable? How can we discuss religion without getting into arguments that generate a lot of heat but little light? Here are suggestions based upon scripture. Maintain one. Maintain a spirit of gentleness and humility. But, you, but for the grace of God, you would be lost too. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you'd be lost too, according to Galatians 1, or 6, 1. Refuse to be drawn into religious quarrels. If discussion degenerates into one, admit your own fault and suggest the study continue at another time. 2 Timothy 2, 23-24 speaks about this. Don't try to teach until you're able to teach, according to 2 Timothy 2, 24 and James 3, 1-2. Be patient. Some people take longer than others. 2 Timothy 2, 24. If necessary to correct someone who opposes you, do so with humility. 2 Timothy 2, 25. Remember the wisdom of Solomon. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Proverbs 15, 1 through 2.
Give me a second, people. It might help to maintain patience and humility if we keep in mind that Paul says those in error are in a snare of the devil. Having been captive by him to do his will, 2 Timothy 2.26 states that. The only way they can escape is the, through the proper and delicate use of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, according to Ephesians 6.17. When people ask questions, it's best to answer them with the Scriptures. Use an open Bible to answer their questions. Better yet, have them read it out of their own Bibles. There are several reasons for doing this. And yes, people, it's important. Get your Bible. If any of these verses you have a question with, go back uh, to the Word of God and, and, and see if what I'm saying is the truth. Because I don't want you to just take my word for it. You've got to make sure that what I'm saying is the truth. They are more likely to understand the point you are trying to make if they can both read and hear it. One, it is hard for them to disagree with what you they can read for themselves in their own Bible. Two, you three, gather their respect and confidence that you are only teaching the word of God and not the ideas of men. It's important, people. It's not what you say. It's thus saith the Lord. Amen. So as often as, a poss as possible, let them answer their own questions by having them read it for themselves. Use difficult questions to set up future studies. A fear many people have in teaching others is they... They will be asked a question for which they do not know the answer. But such questions can be advantageous advantageous if handled properly. Here's how. One, don't try to bluff your way through a subject you are not prepared for. Gain respect for honesty by admitting you need to study further. Admit people, if you don't know the answer, just tell them, no, you don't know the answer. Don't pretend like you do. It's okay to admit you don't know the answer sometimes. Two, use that difficult question as a reason to continue the study on another occasion. Explain that to give an answer the question deserves, you will need to study more and come back at another time. What might, a first, what might at first appear to be a stumbling block to a teacher can actually be in a stepping stone for an increased opportunity or for increased opportunities. Close effectively, people. After you've presented the material in your lessons, you need to ask for a response. This can often be the most difficult part of teaching. For now, you are asking the person to make a judgment about the truthfulness of what you have been saying and to make a decision as to whether they will obey it. To close effectively, you might ask the, the person the following question. Questions. Does this make sense? Is there anything I have said that you do not understand? Have I been teaching you anything other than what the Bible teaches? Mm. These are important questions. Assuming the person answers favorably, you then need to make the, make the actual request. Here is where I differ from some approaches, which is to be sound like subtle ways to move someone to do something they really don't want to do. Sort of like a salesman trying to make it close with someone who is really not sold on the product. Since conversion occurs only when our faith is working in cooperation with God's power, according to Colossians 2.12, it is absolutely necessary that the prospect has truly come to faith and repentance before they are baptized. Therefore, I believe a simple and direct question is all that is necessary. Would you like to obey Christ, people, now and be baptized for the remission of your sins? If the person says no, you might ask why not. And depending upon the answer, study some more or set up a, a time to, for future study. In any case, let the person know that they are always uh, ready to study further should they be interested and that you are always available should they decide to obey the gospel. Remember that you sow to, that what you sow today may take time before it be, finally begin, brings forth a harvest. Finally, a thought or, or two about overcoming objections. In a similar vein, and dif vein I defer with some of how on how to handle object objections. Certainly we should ever be ready and willing to answer objections that are raised. But again, unless you believe with all your heart, according to Acts 8, 36 to 37, God's blessings provided in baptism will not be found. Therefore, we need to be careful not to apply undue pressure while we want to encourage others to obey the gospel. You must make sure that the decision is Is so. Be careful to let the gospel of Christ be the converting power, 
not persuasive words of human wisdom. If a person understands what the gospel says, a simple request accompanied with an earnest plea for obedience to Christ Jesus should suffice, according to 1 Colossians or 1 Corinthians 2, 4, chapter 2 and verse 4. All right, God bless each and every one of you tonight. I just want to thank you guys for listening to this study. I know it was kind of a short study, and uh, I had to jump a bunch of, uh, pack a bunch of stuff in there. But I hope that was a real blessing to you guys, and I would love to pray for you guys right now. So I'm going to pray that you receive this word and that uh, you just learn how to get out in and, and your city and your area and evangelize. You know, it doesn't take a perfect person. Uh, it just takes a repentant person, a person that's seeking God and running after his heart. And you know what, people, I know there's many of you out there, and God wants to use you guys. God wants to do something mighty in your life, but first, you've got to step out. you got to step out of your comfort zone, people. Yes, I'm telling you, people, step out of your comfort zone and, and, and just step out by faith and, and just see what God can do. Watch God open doors. Watch God open hearts. Watch God change lives, people. You want to see miracles? Go and be a miracle, people. You are a miracle. Each and every one of you are God's miracles, and you know what? He wants to empower you and use you. Get in his word, repent of his sins or of your sins and follow Christ with all your heart, people, and he's going to bless you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you, Lord, for this word tonight, the evangelism made personal. I thank you, Lord, that we've got to take your word out to the streets and we need boldness and confidence to do it. We need strength, Father. So I ask God, if any are listening to this video, that you would empower them, that you would anoint them, that you would begin to fill them with your Holy Spirit right now, God, that you would begin to open doors of, of blessing in regards to their future. God, I ask right now, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, that you would give them wisdom and revelation and a greater anointing, greater calling upon their life, Lord, that you would use them in mightier ways. And that, Father God, you would just pour out your love over each and every family that's listening, each and every life. God, I come against every demonic oppressive attack of the enemy over their life and I just said rebuke it and take authority over it and I ask Lord that the peace of God and the Holy Spirit would just flow into their hearts and lives God that would change them and and just let them know that they're loved and that they're blessed God in you and God I just thank you for that I ask God that you bring them to their knees of repentance that Father God that your Holy Spirit would convict them of their sins and that you would be upon them that you would would, would run after their heart run after them God as they follow Follow after you with all their heart, Lord. Run after them, God, because you love them. And they're they're really your desire. And so I just ask God right now, Lord, that you pour out your spirit over them in the name of Jesus. And God, that you would move in a mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you on YouTube. It was an honor uh, making this video. Pardon me for some of the, uh, the imperfections in it. Uh, but... But I really believe it'll be a blessing if you listen to it. Uh, I'm an imperfect person, but God is a perfect God. So you know what? If you were blessed by this message, uh, please uh, click below, subscribe to my page. And, uh, and you know what? Have a blessed night. God bless each and every one of you. The Lord loves you, and I do as well. You have a wonderful night. God bless.